I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, our King, in what you hear. Oh, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Oh, yes. Whatever we say or sing or do, Lord, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Good morning to Mel and Kathy and Yolinda. <clears throat> Any minute now, Connie's coming. I just know it. There's Cindy. Hallelujah. Melissa. <clears throat> Praise God. I tell you what, I'll toast to Jesus this morning and to you, my precious, precious brothers and sisters. Ah, my throat needed that. We are still having ourselves quite a time here in the book of Job. We are up to chapter 34 today, y'all, if you would please turn in your Bibles. <clears throat> if you don't have one, I pray you put it on your shopping list and go get one. And if you want the same translation as me, here is my beat-up, well-used Bible that's taped together and who knows what all. This is the one-year Bible, and it follows every day of 365 for the year. And this is the New King James translation. All the these and the thous are not there anymore because we don't even speak like that, do we? <clears throat> and it follows every day, so it keeps you on your toes. So I am looking at August 30th, and we will be reading Job 34 and following. And we have the youngest of these friends who have come to comfort Job. A lot of stuff has been said that wasn't comfort, but they came. They came. And so now we're going to hear further from this youngest one named Elihu. Elihu, okay, and he has his chance. Now, he's kept quiet while all the rest have talked, given their answers, given all these reasonings, and gone off on tangents, and, and Job is trying to digest it and receive it. And so let's see what Elihu further has to say. There's Connie. Elihu further answered and said, Hear my words, you wise men. Give ear to me, you who have knowledge. For the ear tests words. And I hope that all of our ears are testing and enjoying God's word. As the palate tastes food. True. Let us choose justice for ourselves. Let us know among ourselves what is good, Elihu says. For Job has said, I am righteous, but God has taken away my justice. Should I lie concerning my right? My wound is incurable, though I am without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinks scorn like water? 
who goes in company with the workers of iniquity and walks with wicked men. For he has said, It profits a man nothing that he should delight in God. Therefore listen to me, you men of understanding, far be it from God to do wickedness and from the Almighty to commit iniquity. For he repays man according to his work and makes man to find a reward according to his way. Surely God will never do wickedly, nor will the Almighty pervert justice, who gave him charge over the earth, or who appointed him over the whole world. If he should set his heart on it, if he should gather to himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh would perish together and man would return to dust. If you have understanding, hear this. Listen to the sound of my words, Elihu says. Elihu. Should one who hates justice govern? Will you condemn him who is most just? Is it fitting to say to a king, you are worthless? Now here's a little torrent of questions. And to nobles, you are wicked? Elihu is saying, is this what you should say? Yet he is not partial to princes, nor does he regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. In a moment they die, in the middle of the night. The people are shaken and pass away. The mighty are taken away without a hand, for his eyes are on the ways of man, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. There's no hiding from God, is there? For he need not further consider a man that he should go before God in judgment. He breaks in pieces mighty men without inquiry and sets others in their place. Therefore, he knows their works. He overthrows them in the night, and they are crushed. He strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others, because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come to him. For he hears the cry of the afflicted. When he gives quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hides his face, who then can see him? Whether it is against a nation or a man alone, that the hypocrite should not reign, lest the people be ensnared. For has anyone said to God, I have borne chastening, I, I will offend no more. Teach me what I do not see. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. Is that what you would say? Should he repay it according to your terms? Just because you disavow it. You must choose, and not I. Therefore, speak what you know. Men of understanding say to me, wise men who listen to me, Job speaks without knowledge. His words are without wisdom. Oh, that Job were tried to the utmost because his answers are like those of wicked men. For he adds rebellion in his sin. He claps his hands among us 
and multiplies his words against God. And we continue on with chapter 35 of Job. Eov, moreover, Elihu answered and said, Do you think this is right? Do you say, My righteousness is more than God's? For you say, What advantage will it be to you? What profit shall I have? More than if I had sinned? I will answer you and your companions with you. Look to the heavens and see, and behold the clouds. They are higher than you. If you sin, what do you accomplish against him? Or if your transgressions are multiplied, what do you do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness affects a man such as you, and your righteousness a son of man. Because of the multitude of oppressions, they cry out. They cry out for help because of the arm of the mighty. But no one says, where is God, my maker, who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of heaven? There they cry out, but he does not answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not listen to empty talk, nor will the Almighty regard it, although you say you do not see him. Yet justice is before him, and you must wait for him. And now, because he has not punished in his anger, nor taken much notice of folly, therefore Job opens his mouth in vain. He multiplies words without knowledge. And we move along to chapter 36. Elihu also proceeded and said, Bear with me a little, and I will show you that there are yet words to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar. I will ascribe righteousness to my maker, for truly my words are not false. One who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Oh, okay, perfect. Hmm. Behold, God is mighty, but despises no one. He is mighty in strength of understanding. He does not preserve the life of the wicked, but gives justice to the oppressed. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but they are on the throne with kings, for he has seated them forever, and they are exalted. And if they are bound in fetters, held in the cords of affliction, then he tells them their work and their transgression, that they have acted defiantly. He also opens their ear to instruction and commands that they turn from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they do not obey... They shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart store up wrath. They do not cry for help when he binds them. They die in youth, and their life ends 
among the perverted persons. He delivers the poor in their affliction and opens their ears in oppression. Indeed, he would have brought you out of dire distress into a broad place where there is no restraint. And what is set on your table would be full of riches, richness. But you are filled with the judgment due the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold of you because there is wrath. Beware, lest he take you away with one blow. For a large ransom would not help you avoid it. Will your riches or all the mighty forces keep you from distress? Do not desire the night when people are cut off in their place. Take heed. Do not turn to iniquity, for you have chosen this rather than affliction. Okay. Job has lost all of his children in one blow, one moment. And they were feasting together at their older brother's home enjoying themselves and along came it says a strong wind so are we to think a tornado or something probably because the roof fell in on them and killed them all this is what job is dealing with but this man elihu says take heed do not turn to iniquity, for you have chosen this rather than affliction. Job didn't choose the affliction to lose all his kids. Let's go on. Behold, God is exalted by his power. Who teaches like him? Who has assigned him his way? Or who has said, you have done wrong? Remember to magnify his work, of which men have sung. Everyone has seen it. Man looks on it from afar. Behold, God is great, and we do not know him. Nor can the number of his years be discovered, for he draws up drops of water which distill as rain from the midst which the clouds drop down and pour abundantly on man indeed can anyone understand the spreading of clouds the thunder from his canopy look he scatters his light upon it and covers the depths of the sea for by these he judges the peoples he gives food in abundance he covers his hands with lightning and commands it to strike his thunder declares it the cattle also concerning the rising storm and we leave off there for today. But I encourage you to read on. It's your Bible. And he is your God. So listen to what he has to say. He will speak to your heart and your spirit. We move along right now to the New Testament. And we are reading in 2 Corinthians. Today we will read chapter 4 chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. Paul continues, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced 
the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, referring to Satan, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Oh my, what if Paul had been sitting with Job and his friends? My, wouldn't have that been a conversation? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the, the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. <clears throat> For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us but life in you. Wow. That could be read several times and really get into the deepness of what Paul is telling them. We move along now to Psalm 44. Psalm 44. It has a note here that says this is a contemplation of the sons of God. Korah, K-O-R-A-H. And it was given, these words were given to the chief musician who wrote music. My, I wish I knew the tune. Maybe sometime in heaven, right? Here are the words. We have heard with our ears, O God. <clears throat> our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days, in days of old. You drove out the nations with your hand, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples and cast them out, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, in the light of your countenance, because you favored them. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you we will push down our enemies. Through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. In God, we boast all day long and praise your name forever. Selah, 
a little closing word there that says, think on that. Contemplate these words. And further meaning, look it up. It's a wonderful word to look up. S-E-L-A-H. Selah. We wrap up today's reading. My precious brothers and sisters, thank you all so much for coming. And Connie's documenting there for you so that later, if you want to go back to all the scriptures or you want to send all this on to a friend, then they will have the scriptures written out also. And that would be wonderful because this is our job, isn't it? Getting the gospel of Jesus out to people in whatever condition or shape they're in, in this evil end time world. This is the good news. So let us wrap it all up with Proverbs 22, verses 10 through 12. Proverbs chapter 22, verses 10 through 12. Cast out the scoffer, and contention will leave. Boy, that's true, isn't it? Yes, strife and reproach will cease. He who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the faithless. Faithless. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. Faith in him. And this is him here. This is his word. This is what he thinks. This is what he has to say. This is who he is. And he is king of kings, lord of lords, sitting high and lifted up on his throne, well able, well able to know everybody and know all of the babies who aren't formed yet in their mother's womb. And we, the faithful, love life. So we are for babies and babies being born, no matter what the circumstances. Circumstances change, they can work out, there are answers. But let the baby be born. There are people who want, can't have kids and they want to adopt one. So I encourage life today, life, breath, it's all from the Lord. It's his precious gift to populate the earth. Hallelujah. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the faithless, those who don't know him. And this is our wonderful, wonderful commission, isn't it? To get his word out to people who never heard it, don't get it, and let them see that we live by it, we walk by it. It makes sense. It will cover every situation in life. I'm very excited about the word of God, and I know you are too. Let's close in prayer. Father God, how we bless you for our lives. Your breath is in us. You have given us voices to speak and minds to think and ears to hear and eyes to see, hands to do things, feet to go places. You've given us a heart, Lord, and it beats. And Lord, we appreciate every single beat for death comes in an instant and then breath leaves the spirit leaves our bodies and goes to you so lord we treasure today we treasure it we treasure our homes our jobs our schools 
We treasure America. Lord, we treasure our Constitution, written by righteous people who came across the dangerous ocean to find this freedom, freedom and to write this Constitution that has served America to rise above as a very, very wonderful country. Lord, we come against evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Evil according to what you say is evil. We see it, we hear it, and we come against it. And Lord, we'd ask that evil people would be removed from high places and that righteous people who love you and love America and want to do well for people, not rob them, not tell them, take their lives over and bring communism, which never has worked. Father God, we cry out to you. We cry out to you for this freedom is very fragile. It is fleeting. And Father God, we know that prayer Prayer is the weapon of choice. Prayer is how we will live by. And so, Father God, we give you thanksgiving in prayer. We lift up, Lord, your special people, the Jews. We lift up Israel, Lord, as she wages war and battles on. We thank you, Father, for the wonderful man, the Bedouin man, who they found down there in one of those tunnels, caves, and freed him, let him go to a hospital to be checked over, reacquainted with his family, eating, drinking, filled with joy. Lord, we know there are more. And we're asking, Father God, that you send Rakakodesh, wonderful Holy Ghost, wonderful Holy Spirit, please make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. Lord, let your people rescue all who have been captive and treated terribly. And Lord, we'd ask that the enemy would be pushed back, destroyed if that's what you want. Precious God, we'd ask that your blood would cover the Israeli Defense Forces and all of their generals and military experts, that it would cover the governing body called the Knesset, that it would lead and guide Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, who loves his country and his people. Father God, your little tiny country is a great example to the whole world. And so, Lord, we lift them up. We lift up our families. We would ask Holy Ghost that you would work with their hearts and their minds today to draw them unto you, to bring them to you, to bring answers to their prayers, to show them your path for their lives. Show us, Lord, your perfect path for our lives. And then help us, Lord, to stay on that path. We thank you, Lord, for this time together, this time of worship, this time of gathering and reading together. Lord, we feel like we've had a good meal together. And now, Lord, take us on our way for the day. Or maybe it's night when you're watching. And Father, if it's night, I'd ask that after hearing your word that you would give your people rest and sleep. Lord, if it's daytime when they are listening, I'd ask that you would go with them wherever it is they need to go today. Protect them. Let them walk along knowing when they're in your path. Let the witness of the Holy Ghost speak to their hearts. And use every one of us, Lord, to be great witnesses for you. And we pray all this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Christ, Yeshua, the only begotten Son of God. And there is no other God or Lord or King. There is one God. 
sitting on a throne, the creator of this earth, and you and me. Let us worship him, for he loves us with a pure love. Have a great day in him. I love you. Bye-bye.